Hello everyone, I'm Dusha Viswas. I'm a PhD student at Fifth Culture and Culture Institute of Technology. And I am present to, uh, I'm here to present our work, Entity Type Prediction, Leveraging Graph Works and Entity Description. My co-authors are Jan Potrish, Heiko Polheim, Harald Sack, and Mevish Alam. Now, if I ask you, what is a chessboard? Undoubtedly, you would tell me that it's a game. But DBPTA tells me something different. It tells me it's a thing which is the most codes grained uh, or the general class type in DBpedia, and it practically gives me no information about this entity. Similarly, for salmon, we all know it's a fish, but DBpedia again tells me it's a thing. So similar to chessboard and salmon, there are about 307,164 entities in DBpedia 2016-10 version, which are typed as the most general class in DBpedia, which is the owl thing. So besides this also, there are entities which are not assigned to the most fine grain type. Here I have the statistics for the same from DBpedia. For example, the class DBO person has 60 subclasses such as actors, musicians, artists, writers, etc. But only 36.6% of 1.8 million persons in DBpedia has a fine grained type. That is, it is assigned to if this entity is an actor or a musician, et cetera. For scientists, uh, only 33.5% of the scientists out of 25,000 scientists in DBpedia has a finer grain type. That is, it is further typed as a chemist or a botanist or a physicist etc. For settlement, 68.3% of the settlements has a fine grain type. And for company, only 13.9% have a more specific type. That is, we know about the type of the company, if it is an automobile company or a software company or so on. Therefore, you can see that there is a huge gap in the missing information of the entity types in DBpedia. So is in other knowledge graphs as well. So to overcome this, in this work, we leverage the contextual type information, contextual information of the entities by considering different strategic graph works. Here we have a knowledge graph where the nodes E1, E2, E3 are given as the nodes of this graph. And then the relations between them are given by directed ages R1, R2, R3, R4, and so on. So we perform different strategic graph walks in this knowledge graph. The first one is the classic walks. So the, in the classic walks, we consider both the entities and the relations between them. So starting from node E3, we go to R2, E1, R1, E2. Then again, we go to E3, R2, E4, R3, E5. Also, Starting from E3, we have E3, R2, E4, R1, E6. So here we consider both the entities and the relationships between them. Next comes the entity box. And then in the entity box, as the name suggests, we consider only the entities. So starting from E3, again, we have E1, E2. So we don't consider the relations between them. Then again, we have E3, R2. We don't again consider R2. We have E3, R, E4, and E5. And again, we have E3, E4, E6. The third and the last type of work used in this model is the predicate work. And here, as the name suggests, we consider the relations. So starting again from E3, we have R2, R1. Again, from starting from E3, we have R2, R3. And then again, from E3, we have R2, R1. And here, we consider only the initial node, but the rest of the nodes are ignored in this box. So after we have this box, we use this to generate the latent representation of the entities. And then we consider this box as sentences and we train the what to make model in this sentences where the entities and the relations are considered as words of the sentences. We also use a classic what to make model as well as an ordered what to make model. So the drawback with the classic what to make model is that it does not consider the position of the words in the sentences, which is then rectified in the structured word to pick model, which considered the position of the words. Therefore, we have from, from the classic box, uh, we have the classic RDF to vec model, as well as the ordered classic word to vec model. In TT works, we have the ERDF to vec model. And for the predicate works, we have the PRDF to vec model. 
Additionally, we also use in this uh, um, architecture the entity type entity descriptions to predict the missing entity types. So for that, we use the SBIRT or the sentence BERT to generate the entity description embeddings. So the end SBIRT model is fine-tuned using a SIMIS network uh, on, the, on the top of the BERT model and the resulting sentence embeddings are semantically meaningful and semantically similar sentences appear closer to each other in the embedding space. For one epoch, a three-way softmax classifier objective function is used and it is fine-tuned on two data sets uh, two different data sets. Therefore, the final entity description embedding obtained here uh, lose the domain specific knowledge and bias. Once we have all this uh, entity representations, we use different combinations of these representations as input to the prediction model. So first we use the individual vectors, then we have the concatenated vectors, and third we have the global and the local PCS as well. So for the global PCA, we consider the entity vectors from the entire of DBpedia to perform the PCA, and for local, we consider only the entities from our data sets. Now the prediction model, after we have the entity representation, as I explained in the last uh, slide, this is provided as an input to a full connected, two layer full connected classification model, which uses ReLU as an activation function. This framework consists of a multi-class as well as a multi-label classification. For a multi-class classification, a softmax classifier with cross entropy loss is used in the last layer to calculate the probabilities of the entity belonging to different classes. In the multi-label classification, an entity can belong to more than one class. Therefore, a certain entity belonging to one class has no impact on the decision of its belonging to another class. A sigmoid function with a binary cross entropy loss is used in the last layer to which sets up a binary classification problem for uh, each class. Now, Apart from this, the framework also provides a hierarchical classification model. And here I have shown two levels of hierarchy, but later uh, we will see that there are more levels in the data sets we have used. So in the hierarchical local classifier per level model, we have a multi-label classification, multi-class classification model on each level of the hierarchy. So here in level one, we have one classifier, and then in level two, we have another classifier, and in tries to find out the missing types of the entities in each of these uh, layers, layers. Now the data sets used to evaluate our model are DBpedia and figure. DBpedia is uh, DBpedia 1, 2, 3. These are the three equal splits of DBpedia 630k data set. And uh, the figure is comes from Freebase, which consists of 201,933 with entities with 102 classes. And for DBpedia, the initial data set comprises of 14 classes, but we have extended it with the hierarchy, and now it comprises of 48 classes. And then the train test and valid consists of 50%, 30%, and 20% of the whole entities, or all the entities um, used in this data sets. So the results show that GRAND outperform, uh, considerably outperforms the baseline models. We evaluated GRAND in three different settings, the coarse grain, the fine grain, and the hierarchical. Uh, there are many existing baseline models on entity typing, and our proposed model has been compared with all of them in the paper. But however, here we have put the best performing model for each of the categories. So for coarse grain, we have HMGCN, as the name suggests, it uses a GCN model and it uses categories properties and keywords from textual entity descriptions and but we see that our um, proposed model with all the combination of the vectors and then OA here represents the ordered vectors uh, outperforms the uh, baseline model and the, for the code sprint we use 14 classes. For fine-grained classification comprising of 37 fine-grained class in the final layer of the, of the leaf nodes, uh, we use cat to type BERT model uh, as the baseline because it is the best performing baseline model in this category. And we can see that uh, our proposed grand model outperforms, all, uh, outperforms for all the data sets. 
and for all the matrices used. So HMGCN higher is the hierarchical classification model and it is observed that GRAND outperforms the micro F1 and, and achieves comparable results with the macro F1 across all the data sets. Uh, furthermore, the impact of the graph box has also been studied as a part of strategic graph box, and it is observed that combination of all the graph work vectors provides best results. Here you can see it. And then uh, the micro F1s are better than macro F1s because the class distribution is unbalanced. For coarse grained classification, since the classes are uniformly distributed, not much difference is observed in the macro and the micros. Uh, as well as for the different graph works, but however, also here the best performing results gives the the combination gives the best performing results. Uh, also, as mentioned earlier, we have a level wise classification, and in the data set we use for DBPT, there are uh, four levels of hierarchy, and these are the classes on, at each level. And uh, then, uh, as observed, and uh, the and it as expected also that the coarse grained can be classified better than the fine grained classification. Uh, to summarize our work, the grand, um, the proposed model grand uses a strategic graph work and entity descriptions to predict the missing entity types. The hierarchical classification has also been proposed to predict the entity types at each levels. The order aware RDF2VEC, which uses the structure RDF2VEC model, considers the position information of the entities and the relations, which results in better representation of the entities. The large context ranges used considered in the graph walks because we went for multiple hops and then that gives a lot of contextual information uh, which is being captured to predict the missing types of the entities. However, in future, grant is, is to be used for scholarly data as well as calligraph. Thank you very much for your attention.